Hey gang, Craig Ripley here. Welcome once again to Living Off the Slab. Now today what I want to do is get back to talking about my search for a new pair of boots. If you remember a couple of videos ago, I described how I was going through the process of trying to find this unicorn that is a good protective pair of boots, but also one that is comfortable to walk in. And the reason that I wanted this is because on our big trip for 2022, I am heading out to do Route 66 and, of course, points beyond, hitting a few national parks. And there's going to be a lot of getting on and off the bike, going to see roadside attractions. So I am looking for that unicorn, as I mentioned, that is a, both a protective boot and a good, comfortable walking boot. Before we get into the boots, I want to remind you that we are going on this 2022 trip that I mentioned, and I've got the planning process that I am going through right now. I have a free membership out on my website at www.livingoffthe-slab.com that you can join and you can follow along with this entire planning process. Right now, I'm starting to work on packing for this trip, and I've got 16 videos out there that I've done that goes into a whole lot of detail about this planning and packing preparation process. And if you want more, I also have a paid membership that you can join, and then you'll be able to follow along as we travel on this trip. I will be doing some YouTube videos when I get back, but all of the on-the-road videos, that is our behind-the-scenes and daily updates, those will be done to the Travelers Club exclusively. So go out to my website and you can check that out. And you can also check out my Creating Epic Road Trips course and some of the other offerings that I have. So, all right, let's get back to the boots. Now, as I had mentioned in my last video, it's been kind of tough to find the proper pair of boots that meets this criteria of being protective and comfortable and walkable all at the same time. Not only is that a hard thing to find in motorcycle boots in general, but we also have to deal with this post-pandemic shortage and availability issues that all of us are running into. Right? It's hard to find a lot of the models that are just back-ordered or don't have the right sizes. After I did the last video, I got a lot of great suggestions on other boots that I should try, but also we had some interesting comments on the biomechanics of injury and so forth when it comes to a motorcycle crash. So I decided to look into that a little bit. And I'm not going to bore you with going through all of the studies. I'll link them in the description of this video so that if you want to go and look at those yourself, you can. The bottom line is that I found out that most of the clothing that we use, that is CE Level 1 approved motorcycle shoes, pants, jackets, all that stuff, does a great job at protecting us from abrasions and lacerations, you know, from having a crash but it does very little in protecting us from more serious injuries, that is, broken bones, serious contusions. In fact, the only piece of motorcycle gear that we wear that really had any effect on preventing fracture or more serious injury were our boots, right? The foot gear that we wear. My question, however, was what kind of shoe, what kind of boot do you really need to wear in order to prevent fracture? Right? Because things like this, it's a CE rated boot, it's got ankle protection on it, but there's not really a whole lot of protection from fracture here, right? This is, you know, a good shoe that's going to protect you from abrasion, as we just said, uh, protects you from laceration. It'll Stabilize your ankle a little bit, but come on, there's not a whole lot of fracture protection here. And that's even true for an adventure boot like this. Right? You can fold most of these things over very easily like that. You can squish them down. Again, 
I know from personal experience, a boot like this doesn't offer a lot of protection from fracture. So after going through this whole process, I decided to try one more boot before I gave up. Right, and that is, I decided to look at a boot that was suggested by many people who watched the first video as well as some of the people on my forum. And that is this boot right here. This is the Forma Terra Evo Low boot. And it is kind of a step up above the adventure boot, somewhere between an adventure boot and a motocross boot. So ultimately, this is what I found. I did a lot of reading, I did a lot of research, and I also took the recommendations of several people who had watched my videos or participated in my uh, online community, and I found these, and they are the Forma Terra Evo Low boots, and they are waterproof boot. They use a dry tex membrane, and on top of that, they are a pretty comfortable a boot to walk around and ride in. Uh, very comfortable while riding and walking were great. I wouldn't want to go on a hike in these things, but if I'm going into a museum or to a roadside attraction, I think that they are going to work very, very well. So on top of this boot being very comfortable and waterproof, uh, they do offer a bit more protection over some of the other, quote, adventure boots that are out there, right? And they do that in the form of this plastic gusseting on the ankle on both the lateral and the medial side here, giving it a lot of extra stiffness, right? It really takes quite a bit of pressure to bend that over uh, much more than you would find on those adventure boots that I showed you earlier. And of course, they have the two buckle strapping system and a Velcro closure up here around the ankle. And uh, these work very easy. I've heard that uh, they can get clogged up with mud if you're a, an off-road rider. Uh, however, I am not gonna be doing that. These are gonna be primarily used for uh, road boots. I have some more heavy duty, the uh, Alpine Star Tech 7s that I wear if I'm really doing off-road stuff. Um, so I think this is gonna work very well for me. Uh, they got a great sole on here, uh, a lot of nice grip. There, and also this is a replaceable sole. So again, that's another plus. So all right, I think that's it. I think this is gonna do it for me. I, this is gonna be my boot that I'm gonna take on this big trip this year. And I think I should be able to get many years of riding out of this. I can already feel that after just riding in at one time, that it's gonna start loosening up and get really very comfortable. That leather is gonna soften and the boot, again, will just kind of form to my foot. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to using these this year. Um, we'll find out if that dry tech works as well as my favorite Gore-Tex, but I'm not expecting any problems and I'll carry some dry socks with me just in case. All right, guys, that's it. So I think I found my unicorn.